Hello, 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 and welcome home. We are here Wednesday living room chats for a non-spoiler review of the movie The Devil All the Time. This is a Netflix movie. It came out on Friday. So yeah, again, if you want more in-depth, more of the spoiler review type of thing, link in the description for that. Um, yes. So this movie, the description on Netflix is basically about a small town and all of the sinister people in it and the corruption going on and this boy just trying to protect the people that he loves from all the craziness that's going on um, in his town. So yeah, I will warn right now the movie is rated R because there are some some blood like some graphic scenery there are some fight scenes and they definitely do not hold back also warnings for mentions of abortion two suicides um and just violence against women uh, again like i just feel like forewarning if any of this is something that triggers you or makes you uncomfortable then just know that before you sit down and watch this movie um yeah but warnings aside some of the other things um if you don't mind that or you just need to be warned before that um then i would definitely say like those the the movie takes place in west virginia so the accents wild um i'm not from west virginia you couldn't tell so i have i have no idea how someone from west virginia would talk whether they're accurate or not i couldn't say but like they aren't bad as so they take you out the movie but it's just like weird because I know that not, half those actors do not have West Virginia accents like that in real life so it's just strange I guess for me to hear them because like that's the next part of it the cast like Tom Holland is British and he's out here with this little little southern accent I was like where the where did you get that who taught you that I was so confused it, I mean it was good especially like Robert Patterson in the role I mean he did his role well but honestly his character is interesting to say the least you know so it was um different to see him in that kind of a role i will say that um but even robert's accent i was like okay i guess this is i'll roll with it i'll roll with it but the whole cast i mean we got go rob spider-man winter soldier the guy from it i was like i'm not gonna lie i always get a little iffy when i see him around is he pennywise no but does my child's brain remember that all the time? No. I'm like, should I? T <laughs> I've got my guard on right now when that man comes on screen. Also, the girl who's Alice in Alice in Wonderland is Mia Wasikowska. If I said her name wrong, I'm sorry. But the whole movie, I'm just looking at this girl. Like, she looks so damn familiar. And then I realized she was in Alice in Wonderland. I also have one of the girls from Little Woman. It's Beth March. We have Eliza Sandlin. <laughs> I wrote people's names down, but it's on my dry erase board, so the letters look weird. You know how you write something and the letters just kind of, I don't know, like spread out? I don't know how to describe it. I'm off topic. Focusing up. But yeah, the cast. I mean, I feel like, for me, at least it was an odd cast. Like, I think that's the good thing about Netflix is they'll just get anybody and everybody in it. But I don't think you necessarily see these people together in Hollywood. At least all of them, right? Um, that 1950s aesthetic, I liked it. I mean, there are not a lot of great things about the 1950s, at least for me, but at least the fashion, fashion is one thing I can say is interesting. Um, religion, big, big one here. I mean, we're talking symbolism, music, prayer, sacrifice, all of that craziness involving religion, you know, how does morals and ethics fit into it, that kind of thing. And kind of what happens when maybe religion is taken too far by the people who follow it you know when people are driven to do certain things in the name of our lord jesus okay when they feel they are called to do certain things so interesting to say the least um if you like things where like it's one of those ones where all the characters are connected you know they kind of talk about it a bit in the netflix description but they when they mean that everybody is connected in some way shape or form whether it was a chance meeting or fate i don't know but a lot of interconnected stories so if you like that kind of thing where it looks like it's just um sorry you think you're just hearing about one person's story then you realize how it branches off to all the other people that were affected by it 
that kind of thing. Um, if you like orphans, that's a thing in this movie as well. Um, a very slow burn plot. The movie was like two hours and like, I don't know. It's not that I minded staying through it, but it's just like, it's kind of plot heavy, right? So a lot of shit happened and I turned my head and I'm watching with my sister. I was like, how much? And she's like, it's only been an hour. Like literally just an hour period. I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> it's one of those ones where you're like, you know that things are still about to get more serious than you thought that they could based on the fact that only an hour had gone back and all this stuff had already happened. I was like, oh my, Atlanta. Um... Yeah, it's it's a crime drama slash thriller, so it is a lot of like there are some graphic scenes and there are some ones where they're kind of like building up to it so you know something's about to go down, that kind of thing. Honestly, overall, like I'm still not sure how to feel about this movie, so maybe I shouldn't be out here reviewing it, but it's one of those ones where you watch it and you're just kind of like, Okay, well now what? <laughs> like now what? Like what do I do with what I just watched? You know, and then you just sit with it. I don't think, I mean, in terms of, I don't know if it's necessarily a Netflix original or this is just a movie that is on Netflix, but um, I still think it's worth a watch. I feel like I'm not convincing anybody with the face I'm making out here, but honestly, I think it is worth the watch in terms of like, I find it interesting the way in which religion was worked into the plot and how it was a catalyst for a lot of characters. But on the other hand, I will say the treatment of some characters, as I talked before about the whole violence against women thing, um, that definitely was a kind of, it lost points for me in that book. But if you are into like that crime, the drama, that kind of thing, then I think this is a movie to watch because at the end of the day, it still is a movie about people and their lives and how they're connected and all the crazy things that can factor into that and influence it. But yeah. It's not making my top 10 list, but it definitely is a movie that I think, like, you know what, it's on Netflix. I think, check it out, you know, if you're interested in those kind of things. But, yeah. So, non-spoiler review, Devil All The Time, it's on Netflix. If you want to check it out, and you do, let me know in the comments. Like, what did you think about the movie? Did I give enough warning? That kind of thing. And I will see you on Friday when we talk about fashion. We're going to be doing some drawing. Uh, yeah. So I will see you guys then. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Thanks for stopping in.